Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and this is Graph Transformations. This is my second series doing Edexcel IGC exam questions per topic. Check out season one if you want some extra videos and more um, questions, and check out my Google Drive for the hard copy of these questions. For now, let's do it. You can see here I've put all of the graph transformations you need to learn on the right hand side of the screen. You have to know those off by heart and I am just going to use them to solve these questions. So we have a maximum point and it says what is the uh, coordinates of the new maximum point? Well f of x plus 9 means it shifts 9 to the left which means that the x coordinate has changed by negative 9. Excuse me. Uh, so the new x coordinate will be minus 4 and the y coordinate will stay the same because it does not affect the y coordinate. f of x plus 3 means up, up by 3, which means the y coordinate goes up by 3. The x coordinate remains unaffected. Next question, uh, very similar, but this time they've tried to throw you off by putting it as s and t rather than giving you actual values. Uh, f of x minus 2 means that's 2 to the right. So the x coordinate will be uh, your add on 2, y coordinate be unaffected. Free f of x means a stretch free in the y axis, which means the y coordinate will be multiplied by 3 and the x will be unaffected. Okay, this question is all about do you know your cos graph? Um, this is a question 23 actually, That's quite, it's quite a tricky question um, considering GCSE you don't really do too much um, like trig graphs but it is in the spec. The cos graph looks like this, um, it goes to a height of 1 and it crosses at 90 and then it goes to 180 here and then it goes to 270 here then it goes to 360 at the end. Now when we have cos of um, x over 2 that means that it's been stretched by a factor of 2 in the x-axis. So that essentially makes this graph stretch out twice as far. So it's going to go all the way like this twice as far. I haven't drawn that very well actually. Let me try and do that again with a bit more space. Apologies, let me draw it here. Um, so it's going to go like this, it's going to go twice as far as the previous uh, graph that I drew, which means that it's going to go all the way to 720 at the end. It means in here, that won't be 180, that'll be 360. Here it won't be 90, it will be uh, 180. Um, so therefore, the A value is 180 and the Y is zero and B is 360 and this will go down just in the same way as the previous one did it will go down to minus one so therefore it's 360 and minus one okay we've got some more uh, just classic graph transformations here so that you need to add four to the X so therefore we're going to get seven Y would be unaffected here we need to multiply the y by 3 because that's a stretch in the y-axis. So that means the y um, coordinate will be times by 3, x unaffected. And this is a stretch in the x-axis by a scale factor of 2. So the x coordinate will be multiplied by 2, y will be unaffected. Oh, there's more on this question left. It says the curve is translated... Um, is the, the equation f of x is translated to give curve c. Curve c has a minimum point 3, 3, 5. So how much was it translated up by, essentially? So it's exactly the same curve, but the minimum point is now at 3, 5. So if I were to draw it here, it would look something like this, with this point being minimum at 3, 5 which means the curve has jumped all the way up to here. It's jumped up by, a, by 9 in the uh, y-axis. So therefore, the value that we add on to f of x is 9. 
because that shifts the graph up by nine. Okay, next question, and we have uh, the minimum point given as this. So what is the new minimum point after this transformation? That moves the x coordinate three to the left. So that now becomes uh, minus 12, 15. This stretches the, um, uh, uh, the y coordinate up by a factor of a third. So I'm going to times the y coordinate by 3 in order to do that. x remains unaffected. OK, next question. And we have a, um, a cosine graph that's been transformed. So it's always a good idea to draw the original cosine graph on just to see what you're, what you're dealing with here. So the cosine graph looks like this. And the first thing to note is that the cosine graph goes between uh, minus 1 um, and... Um, and 1. This graph, the new graph, that goes between minus 2 and 2, which means that it's been stretched by a factor of 2. So therefore, a is equal to 2, because that's what we multiply this new cosine graph by, so that's going to stretch it in the y-axis by a factor of 2. Okay, next, we need to figure out how far it's been moved along, because this is going to shift the graph in the x-axis. Now the best way to do that is to think about the peak of the graph. Um, and let's look at the peak of the original graph. Well, there are two peaks actually, one here and one here. So first off, what we could do is we could shift the peak along the x-axis over to here. And that would be a movement of 270 to the right. And that would give me an f of x minus 270 transformation. But that's no good because um, that's no good because we have to have um, we have to have b uh, between zero and three hundred and sixty, so it has to be positive. So that would be no good. So rather than going that way, because the graph is periodic, what we could do is we could go the other way. We could shift it backwards. We could shift the peak backwards to there to meet up with the new peak. That would be um, a 90 degree to the left transformation, which would be an f of x plus 90. Um, and that is acceptable because that means that b would be 90, which is absolutely fine. And we're done. OK, next question. We've got an f of x and it's in completed the square form, which is really helpful because that is going to make, uh, make it really easy to find what the maximum or minimum point is. In this case, it's going to be a maximum because it is a, um, an, a negative x squared graph. So it's going to have a maximum point as opposed to a minimum point. Now, how do we find those, uh, those maxima or minima? Well, you need to think about this bracket, the square bracket, and how I can make that zero. Because it's a square, it can never be negative. So therefore, the smallest you can make it is zero. And I can make it zero by setting x equal to minus two. And when I do that, that means that if it's zero, then f of x at that particular point will just be nine. So the y coordinate is nine. Okay, um, now it says that the curve has been transformed uh, to the curve s by the translation of four zero. Find an equation for the curve s. Okay, well let's write that in, in f of x term. So that's f of x, if that's, that. That transforms it 4 to the right, so that's f of x minus 4. So what I need to do is I need to take my f of x and I need to replace all the x's. So rather than having x as the input, I need my new input to be x minus 4. So I write 9 minus 3 x minus 4 as opposed to x. Then there's the plus 2, and then there's the, the squared term. OK, so that will transform the graph uh, 4 to the right, because the f of x has turned into an f of x minus 4. Let's simplify that. Um, so the equation would be uh, f of x equals... Um, no, in fact, sorry, I'll just write y equals, uh, just to keep it as an equation as opposed to a function. But a 
I'm pretty sure that's just pedantics. Um, so that would be x minus 2 inside the bracket. Yeah, happy with that. Okay, now it says that the curve C is transformed to the curve T. The curve T has this equation. Describe fully the transformation that maps C onto T. Okay, well, let's look at the original and let's compare them. Um, in order to, I need to zoom out a bit so I can just see both at the same time. Okay, well, um, my original looks like this and my new one looks like this. So I can see that, that is just, that's just been multiplied by minus 1 uh, because each of the two terms there have changed sign. So therefore, um, this is the same as saying um, uh, y equals minus f of x, where my function has just been times by a negative. And this is a reflection in the x-axis. Perfect. Okay, right, these are probably the hardest types of questions. Um, so, how do we get started? Well, first off, um, it's always a good idea to draw the original cos graph onto the graph. So that starts at, um, at 1, it goes to 90, and it goes to minus, uh, it goes to 180 of the value of minus 1, 270, and then back up to 360 like that. Um, and of course, we could also, uh, uh, by symmetry, draw it going backwards as well. Okay, so the thing to note is that it has a range of, um, of minus 1 to 1. Whereas this one goes up to a height of 5 and a depth of minus 1. So that gap is 6, whereas the original curve has a gap of 2. So that gap has been stretched by a factor of 3. Uh, so therefore A is 3. It's been, it's been stretched up uh, by a gap of 3. Okay, um, the next thing to know is that the, um, the line... The, the cosine graph, sorry, has a kind of like um, like a zero line. I don't know what to call it really, but like it has almost like a center here at um, um, like along the x-axis basically. Um, whereas this graph, it goes from minus one to five, so its center is actually here along this line. You can see that's that's kind of like the center of the graph. So we can see how far up has that center shifted, where well, it shifted two spaces up. So therefore I need to add on two to this graph in order to shift it up two. Okay, and then the final thing to look at is how far this graph has shifted horizontally. And we could do that by looking at the peaks of the graph. So there's the peak of the, of the cosine graph originally. And the new peaks are here and here. Now I've noticed here that the B is essentially negative, which means that we're going to, whatever the B value is, is going to shift it to the right. So I've got to think about how far um, the peak has shifted to the right. We well, can see here that this peak has shifted 270 to the right to line up with this peak here. So therefore the B value is 270. And that'll be that'll be a negative because it says up here it, it's minus B, which means it's going to shift to the right, which means it's going to line the peaks up nicely. Bosh. Okay, squeeze this uh, cheeky question in here. Plus 5, up by 5. So the Y coordinate goes up by 5 to 1. X stays the same. 3 inside the bracket means a scale factor in the x of a third. So the x needs to be times by a third to get minus 2. y stays unaffected. Okay, here we're asking to sketch the graph. This is um, 2 g of x, which means that it's been stretched by a scale factor of 2 from the x-axis. 
So this point here, for example, is one away from the x-axis. So that needs to be doubled, so it's going to go down to here. So it's going to be two away from the x-axis. Um, these points are on the x-axis, so they will stay there. This point is two away from the x-axis, so that will double up to four. Um, this point here is two away from the x-axis, so that will double up to four. This point here is uh, three away, so that will double up to here. And um, and uh, minus one, minus one is three away as well, so that will double up to here. Okay, so just connect up these crosses, like so. There's one, and then there's the rest of the V shape, like that. Perfect. Okay, it says that the graph of H of X intersects the X axis at two points. The coordinates are given as such. The graph of H of X plus A passes through the point with coordinates 2, 0, where A is a constant. Find two possibilities of A. Okay, well, um, if I use this graph over here, you can see that it went through um, at that point and at that point, and now it passes through at this point. So either we've shifted the graph four to the left, which would make A uh, positive four, or we shifted this one to the right by three, which would make A negative three. So one of the two. Okay, final question in what has been a monster. We've got the point A and it lies on this straight line, on the straight line with f of x. Okay, find the coordinates of the image of the point A on the straight line with the equation of this. Well, minus 3 just means that the y coordinate goes down by 3, so it's going to go to minus 1. f of x over 2 is a scale factor enlargement of 2 in the x axis, so therefore that is going to times the x coordinate by 2 to get minus 6. Okay, and then finally, um, this nasty question, which is here's the sketch of this graph. The point B with the coordinates PQ lies on the curve. Find the coordinates of the image of the point B on the curve with this equation, where, where C is a constant. Okay, so there's two things that are happening here. Um, uh, we're, we're doing minus, and we're doing the transformation minus f of x, and we're also doing the transformation minus um, f of x minus c. So um, f of x minus c is going to shift the x coordinate to the right by c places. Um, so c, uh, so the x coordinate becomes p plus c. And f of x, sorry, minus f of x is a reflection in the x-axis, which is going to shift the, the point over to this side, which is going to give the y-coordinate a negative value. So the y-coordinate would be minus q. And we're done. If you enjoyed that, like and subscribe, share it, check out season one or check out season two for even more quality videos on the IGCSE. Bye for now.